We live in a world with a surfeit of information, constantly requiring us to select what we really need out of the mass at our disposal. All things considered, the challenge that confronted Western Europe in the Middle Ages was quite similar. In addition to authorities like the Bible, the Church Fathers, or Latin authors from antiquity, a vast amount of new knowledge was suddenly brought into Europe through the translations made from Arabic a century or so earlier. The 12th century, Toledo, not far from the frontier with Al-Andalus, that is, the part of the Iberian Peninsula under Muslim control. Muslim, Christian and Jewish cultures were in close contact here. Jewish scholars offered valuable assistance in the translation process. Toledo became an intellectual center which attracted translators from many parts of Europe. Adlard of Bath, Hermann of Carinthia, Gerard of Cremona and Michael Scott, to name but the most famous. One year readers later, in the 13th century, Latin compilers proposed to collect all this material and to benefit from it. They created encyclopedias by compiling many quotations about all kinds of natural realities, such as angels, the human soul, parts of the body and diseases, stars, animals, plants, minerals, music and so on. Among the main authorities, a special place was given to Greek and Arab authors, recently made available through Latin translations. Let's take the example of the De Proprietatibus Rerum, written by the Franciscan Bartholomew the Englishman around the year 1240. In the section about the sky and the stars, several Greek and Arabic sources are quoted in the Latin translation. From antiquity, the physicians Hippocrates and Galen the philosophers Plato and Aristotle, and the astronomer Ptolemy. From the Arab Muslim world, the Persian Jew Mashallah, Abu Mashal, who is usually regarded as the most famous astrologer of the Middle Ages. Al-Fargani, the author of a very influential introduction to astronomy, and the pioneer of optics, Ibn al -Aytham. In this sequence, I would like to show that these authorities are important from three points of view. First, they brought theoretical information. This is the case with the quotations from Aristotle and Al-Fargani about the unity of the world, celestial nature and mechanics, and the diffusion of light by the sun and the moon. Second, from the lexical point of view, the use of Eastern sources sometimes leaves traces in the compiler's vocabulary. In this passage, where Bartholomew relies on Abu Mashal, the names of the stars al maret and al feta clearly sound Arabic. Third, I would like to focus on Bartholomew's selection of practical examples. These are borrowed from Arab authors and are quite particular to him with respect to the other compilers. As you know, astrological influences are based on the zodiac. Bartholomew defines this as an oblique circle divided into 12 parts of 30 degrees. We have four cardinal signs. Aries and Libra are associated with spring and autumn equinoxes, when day and night have the same duration. Cancer and Capricorn are associated with summer and winter solstices when the day is longest or shortest. A planet will exert more or less influence according to this thing a very specific criteria. Astrologers will assign great importance to the following situations. Firstly, if the planet stands in one of its two houses, as for instance Sagittarius or Pisces in the case of Jupiter. Secondly, if the planet stands in the sign where it has its exaltation, the 27th degree of Capricorn in the case of Mars, for example. Thirdly, if the planet stands in the sign of the triplicity it rules. The triplicity is a group of three signs believed to be of the same nature. 
these natures correspond to the four elements fire, air, water and earth. For example, Aries, Leo and Sagittarius are the three signs of fire. Their triplicity is ruled by the sun during the day and by Jupiter during the night with Saturn's participation. Finally, each sign is divided into three portions of 10 degrees or decans. These are also ruled by a specific planet, for example, Mars, the Sun and Venus for the decans of Aries. In practice, as Bartholomew says in Masha Allah's words, all the things generated and corrupted in this lower world vary and are induced according to the entry and the progression of these seven stars into the twelve signs and to the exit from them. Indeed, astrology affects the climates of the regions of the world and consequently the inhabitants' constitution. Bartholomew seems especially interested by the influences on meteorology as he deliberately inserts a quotation from Abu Mashad about the change of temperature in specific degrees for each zodiac sign. As previously discussed by my colleague Jean Lampire, eclipses were also subject to a series of beliefs which Bartholomew gathers in his encyclopedia. Relying on Masha Allah, he notes the various effects of a lunar eclipse as it occurs in cold signs, in water signs or in air signs where it heralds danger of storm, for example. Human health is another very important aspect of daily life affected by the stars. Just as the moon has an influence on the movement of tides, it's not strange to think that it may also have an influence on the movement of the bodily fluids. Consequently, it may also influence the development or the cure of a disease. In this vein, Bartholomew mentions its effect on women's menstrual flow, on lunatics and epileptics, and on animals' brains. Finally, quoting Ptolemy and Abu Mashad, he points out cases where the moon influences emotional states and the course of events. For example, he says, the moon standing in the second sign after rising means sorrow, sadness, and loss of property by thieves and robbers. In the tenth sign, it means that one who began to reign will be quickly removed. What do these examples actually show us? They show us quite clearly that the astrological ideas of the ancient Greeks found their way into the Latin Middle Ages. And they show us that this was largely due to Muslim and Jewish scholars who thus acted as transmitters in this process. In turn, medieval Latin compilations, such as Bartholomew's De Proprietatibus Rerum, also played an important role, the role of assimilating scientific culture and also that of transmitting this knowledge. Bartholomew's work proved to be a real bestseller. More than 200 manuscripts are extant and it was also printed on various occasions in the Renaissance. In addition, its content was translated, adapted and sometimes reorganized in various languages – Italian, French, Anglo-Norman, Occitan, English, Spanish and Dutch. But this is an aspect which I will leave to my colleague Mattia Cavagna who will deal specifically with astrology in Roman's literature.